Things feel really polarized right now. And how did we get here where everything is so polarized? Wait, who are you talking to? I'm the co-host. It's a really good point, other Arsman. It's like we're all just listening to different voices that are basically the same as ourselves, right? Hello. Yeah, why don't we listen to each other? I'll tell you what, I am curious how American society got so polarized. Well, this feels bad. <laughs> this is nothing is boring. <laughs> Polarization is self-reinforcing. Fancy word, but basically what it means is that over time, we grow to absorb the same media, right? We look to people who validate our beliefs. Basically over time, if we're polarized, we become more and more and more polarized. And it gets to this point where it's hard for us to imagine a perspective outside of our own. But you could argue as long as we've been humans, we have always gathered with like-minded individuals. Favorite food, chicken. Me, turkey. You not, my friend. I find cave person who like turkey. Come on, cave folks, you can do better. But what happened? That was then and this is now. There's a whole complicated story, but here's a quick, tiny, itty bitty history lesson. So basically the constitution was ratified in 1788. And when it was ratified, the person who got the most votes was the president. The person who got the second most votes was vice president. So you could have a president and a vice president from a totally different party. It was just who got those votes. I'm the president of these Americas and I'm a Democrat. And I'm the vice president and I'm not a Democrat. And we both disagree, but we work together. Let's shake out oh, COVID. This will go very well. Then stuff got wild in the election of 1800, which people tend to call the true constitutional crisis. Basically, we had people campaigning against each other for the first time. They were vying for each other's seats as president or vice president. We had outgoing presidents and vice presidents trying to place the next representative. It was a mess. So after that madness, they made the 12th Amendment to the Constitution, which meant that the first place finisher was president and second place was like, good job. But the president's choosing the vice president. Get out! But we were friends. That was then, this is now. The USA started as this beautiful united country that lasted for 12 years. Gotta come together, all birds have a feather, fly, fly towards one another. Gotta come together, all birds uh -huh. have a feather. Let the beat fly, drop, here we go. We're gonna turn it up. Another. Here we go, woo! I'm a bird, I'm a Wait, solo stop. bird in the air. What Look at me with my windswept song. hair, it's absurd. I'm a solo right bird, don't need other birds, don't need other birds. So let's fast forward to today. A recent survey in the Washington Post found that one in 10 people don't have, quote, many friends from the opposing political party. Why is that? And who's benefiting from this? So polarization benefits a lot of people, mostly like the political parties and the media. What has happened is recently, both political parties and the media and some other groups have not only encouraged polarization, they are literally making money from polarization. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Come find out your opinions are true. Buy our newspaper and we'll tell you everything you think is right is right. Extra, extra, come on. So we've gone from like, yeah, these are my friends. We have a lot in common to um, these are my friends. We consume the same media. We eat the same food. We live the same place. We do everything the same. We're the same people. We do the same. Everything tells us we're, everybody, buddy, everybody tells us we're the same. And again, this wasn't an accident. Like literally political parties and some media and social media organizations have intentionally been like, hmm, yes, planting the seeds of poison. Polarization. We're gonna explain how. Hi, I'm the Daily News, and today we have news that is a little bit more important and a bit more scary. So you better watch today and listen, because you need to stay informed on the scary and important news. I'm the Daily News. Hi, we're News One. We want you to keep watching, so we're gonna tell you what you wanna hear every single day. That's our promise. Hi, we're News 2, and we understand that sometimes you don't agree with everything we say, so we make this promise to you. You will never hear us disagree with you again. We'll say exactly what you want to hear. Hi there, we're Social Media. We want you to spend a lot of time on social media. It's how we make money. You know how you don't spend time on something? When it makes you feel uncomfortable or makes you think too much. Gross! Us? 
we promise to make you feel comfortable because then you spend a lot of time on social media and we make money. So you're not gonna see anything you don't like. No, come, wait, come back. Come back, we'll make it more comfortable. Come back, look, everyone loves you. Look at these notifications, they're red, look. No, come back, come back, come back, come back. Ah, you swiped. Don't worry, we're still here, making you feel comfortable. We gotta come together. We're all birds, we are all my birds. No, I am the king all... bird. Everyone's another bird, but I am the main bird. Do you understand? Yes, sure, we're birds. No, what you... But we're my what birds. The... What are you my talking birds. about? Understand? Yes. Okay, I feel like my version was still pretty good. No, it wasn't. There is some good news. This last election, voters in Virginia voted for a state constitution change that would make bipartisan redistricting committees. Basically, they're getting rid of gerrymandering. Right? So there's some stuff happening. So we are fighting back a system that benefits on dividedness. We are challenging social media's algorithms and people are highlighting how the media industry has to do a better job to educate instead of to inflame. It's important for us to be aware of some of the bubbles we live in, right? Maybe they're geographic bubbles, maybe they're friend or community bubbles, especially media bubbles. Where are we where everyone around us reinforces our worldview? Being in a bubble isn't bad, but not being aware you're in a bubble, that seems a little more dangerous. I tried turkey. I tried chicken. Gotta come together. Also, I think we need to listen to each other, my myself included. And we need to empathize with other people. Empathy doesn't mean you like totally agree with the other person, right? It doesn't even mean that what they're doing is okay. Empathy is just intentional imagination. Thinking about what it is like, what led someone to think a certain way. I think that is one of the hardest things to do, but also one of the most important things we can do right now.